Okay, next we have the System Apocalypse Short Story Anthology Volume 1, a little bit of post-apocalyptic fantasy and science fiction anthology. That is definitely the longest title I've, I've read, I think, ever <laughs> for a story. <laughs> um, there's a ton of authors here. Tao Wong being the main author and the um, person who's compiling it and put out the, the notice for an anthology collection and set in his universe. Um, but there's stories from uh, Alexis Keen, Craig Hamilton, Ix Fion, uh, L.A. Bat, uh, R.K. Bilio, so all kinds of uh, good authors there. Uh, the total story is a total of 378 pages, $4.98, so it's available on Kindle Limited. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll read the um, novel description for the anthology as a whole. A bounty hunting survivor, a galactic drunk elf, a woman who has given up her humanity becomes something more. These stories are more available in the first short story anthology for the system apocalypse, covering one year, year one rather, of Earth. When the world ends, humanity steps up, finding new ways to survive in a world of classes, magic, and monsters. The anthology features exciting new stories by five new writers and a new, never publicly released short story by Tao Wong. So there we go. Um, and each one of the um, short stories actually has a novel description in, in the description there, but I'm just not going to read all of them there because there are so many. Um, okay, um, my review for the anthology as a whole, I'll give you that first, and then I'll give you the individual reviews for each um, of the short stories. Uh, on the whole, anthologies are generally kind of a mixed bag. Um, you may love some of the short stories, you may hate others. To me, though, I've always felt like there were a great chance to see works from different authors. And I personally enjoy them because they have the potential to be like these delightful little story nuggets that I can kind of get through and, and put down uh, to, like, to move on to the next short story. Um, and for me, this is actually one of the best lit RPG short story collections that I've, I've had a chance to read. Um, a lot of the time it's like, oh, some of these are really great. And some of them are like, oh, the, some of these aren't even lit RPG. Um, and that's, that's just kind of part of the course for me so far. But this one... The um, Tao Wang made such an effort to make things coherent because they're all set in his same universe. And I think part of the reason that this kind of works is because of the the setting itself. Like the System Apocalypse universe um, kind of has this real flexible RPG system, this real um, flexible way that it's it's applied to people and, the, and commit such a variety of classes um, that you can get a lot of freshness. Even if you're not focusing on the system RPG mechanics themselves, um, it's, it's not really... It's not super challenging to weave in the urban mechanics and still be faithful to like the, the the mechanics of the world, and I think that's that's something in favor of the author and the way he's kind of set up his world. Uh, for me, the uh, overall the novel gets a score of a seven point seven out of ten. It's a really it's one of the best um, and a little bit of anthologies I think I've ever read, and hopefully um, we'll get some more chances to compare to other things. But for now, this is definitely one of the best ones. Um, moving on to the individual reviews I have for intermissions. Um, there are actually seven intermissions in the story, and these are like these little. It's like only like a couple pages and they take place between each short story. And um, I thought that was like a real interesting way to spread like this uh, cohesive short story throughout the novel that acknowledges each of the short stories around it. So like uh, there will be a short story and then the intermission and the intermission machine will actually acknowledge the short story that just came in forward saying, oh, and, well, I'm not going to swear for you, but it'll actually acknowledge it. And that acknowledgement really kind of created a cohesion for the entire anthology that I thought really added to making this instead of just like a random collection of stories, like one cohesive um, kind of concept. So I thought it was really nice of that. So for me, it gets a score of 7.6 out of 10 for the intermissions on the whole. Uh, moving on to the, one of the first short stories, the first short story, I should say hunting monsters by Craig Hamilton. Um, this was actually the best and uh, short story in the anthology for me. And it's, I thought it was great because it's about a bounty hunter that survives the system apocalypse initiation and is on the trail of a system powered serial killer. So it's like this detective story. And it's one of the few stories that I've read that combines the detective genre with the little RPG. Well, I've read several other attempts and it's just, like I said, the mixing some mixing genre sometimes is really challenging because each has these their own expectations, um, and it's not always easy to fulfill both of them without sacrificing something for the other. And this one just maybe is because it was a short story, so there's not a lot of expectation for RPG progression. 
but it did a perfect balance there, and I, I really enjoyed it. Gets a score of eight out of ten for me. Um, the next short story is Tooth and Claw by Alexis Keen. Um, it's an interesting short story about a dog who gets system powers and tries to find his human. Um, and it's it's adorable and it's lovely. It's probably a little it's a little longer than it probably needs to be. Um, but it was had nice action and it's told from the dog's point of view the entire way through. I had a nice time with it. Uh, gets a score of seven point four out of ten. Um, after that, it was Debts and Dances by Tao Wong himself, uh, the author of the System Apocalypse series. Um, it's a short story about Lord Roxley, um, a day before the system is established on Earth. Dances and uh, dangers abound as he makes plans to stake a claim on Earth. The story is a familiar character uh, that was nice to learn more about, and it ties perfectly with the main series without actually spoiling anything. So, really nicely done. Score 7.6 out of 10. Um, Rebellion Within by Ix Fionn. Um, or Phoenix, if he just we were things. Um, it's an interesting, it was actually very interesting to have a non-binary main character. Um, and a story that dealt with the prejudices of the community and those seeking to take advantage of this person. Um, I thought it was the most interesting when it kind of stuck to that plot line, though. Um, and it felt the most genuine. And unfortunately, uh, the story kind of meandered a little bit. Like it didn't stick to that plot line enough for me. And so it, it went and did some action stuff and it did some um, XP grinding stuff and it just kind of lost me a little bit before returning to that main plot line. I just, it just meandered a little bit too much for me for a short story. It's actually like 20% of the entire novel, which tells you it's a, it's a, it's a good chunk of the story. Um, and for a short story, it's just a little bit too slice of life for me. So it kind of lost me. It gets a score of six out of 10. Um, after that, it was Overture to Oblivion by L.A. Bat. Um, it's a really good short story to be honest. It's about a system apocalypse set in New Zealand told from the, uh, Maori, um, Maori perspective. Um, there's really nice cultural development, clear and concise background stories, unique classes and powers. And I like the action. I, I really enjoyed it a lot because it gave me a glimpse into a, a location and a place and cultures that I haven't been exposed to before. It's so fresh and interesting. And I really enjoyed it. It gets a score of 7.8 out of 10. And last is Phoenix Rising by R.K. Bilial. It is, uh, this one was a little mixed for me. It's a story about, um, a, a middle-aged man who has dementia and he, he survives his system apocalypse. And because of his condition, he actually gets bound to a Phoenix who gives him a class that lets him be reborn. Um, so if he's about to die or he can do this voluntarily, um, he can instead be reborn um, in a fiery explosion that can tear out his enemies. Um, and it'll actually the, the, the ability to actually create an entirely new body based upon that, per, by, 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 based upon his memories. Uh, so it ends up kind of, turning the main character into several versions of his past self, him being a teenager, him being a slightly older version of himself. Um, and, and, and I, I thought it was a neat premise, but it got a little annoying because I, I kind of had to get to know the main character again and again and again, as his memories kind of fractured and shifted. Um, and he didn't really remember things that had already occurred. So for him, we kind of got explanations again for system abilities and his abilities were different every time as, as a subclass. Um, and so I, I thought it was neat. And I, overall on the whole, it's still an interesting story. I kind of found the need to get to know the main character again, a little bit annoying. It felt like uh, in, a, in a way that the main character was almost schizophrenic or like he had multiple personalities. Um, and, and, and just, it kind of made it challenging to connect to him uh, because he felt like a different person every time this ability went off, which is kind of the point, I guess. But um, it just it just made it hard for me to, <laughs> to take another character. Um, still, entertaining story overall, good score 7.1 out of 10. So there we go for works. So again, overall, on the entire anthology gets a score of 7.7 out of 10. I had a really good time with it. That's System Apocalypse Short Story Anthology Volume 1. I'm not going to say the rest. With the score 7.7 .7 out of 10. <laughs> 